Not going live. All right. What's up, hacksters? The reason I have this huge no signal image is because uh, I'm about to plug in the Raspberry Pi Zero WH that is inside of this Google AIY Vision Kit, which we put together the other day live. Uh, and I hope I haven't just like joggled any cables loose or anything, but it should be good. So this is gonna be sitting on the desk in front of me uh, and I'm gonna plug it in. I've got it pulled up as a webcam on this computer so that you can see everything I'm gonna do. And we're gonna run through the demos that are on the AIY Vision Kit site. And the only reason that I'm like booting it up right now is so that you can kind of see what it does. I think it's fun to look at uh, as the Pi is booting up and see it on my own screen. <clears throat> so uh, I've put the link in the description to this video of what I'm going through, where the uh, demos are found. And in a few minutes here, you're gonna see the uh, desktop of the Pi pop up with a uh, an AIY kit background. Uh, in the meantime, let's take a look at what we're going to actually be trying out. So um, first up, we're going to stop the joy detector demo, which is what uh, we looked at the other day. That's the one that's by default. It starts up when you plug in your uh, AIY vision kit, which comes with a pre-programmed micro SD card. Um, and it, that's an artificial intelligence face detection demo that detects emotions from like joy and sadness. Um, it, I apparently look sad a lot of the time, but whatever. Uh, and come on, it'll, it'll come up here in just a second. And then there's a few other ones that do like take a picture when you detect a face and like uh, identify this object, which as we will see has kind of variable results. Uh, and what else do we have? We have, you can do this both from the live camera image and from a previously uh, saved image. So as soon as this comes up in just a second, oh, there we go. We have the beep. <laughs> Why do you always think I'm sad? <laughs> so this is what it's doing right now, which is your little facial detection thing. Oh boy. It's actually pretty good at finding faces and stuff. Like I had it pointing at my camera, maybe. Yeah, you can tell that it's like, it's actually working when it's just looking at the little thumbnail on my screen. Uh, and it has that little green LED on for privacy. Okay, yeah. The first thing, thankfully, that we're gonna do is stop that demo from going. <laughs> ah, yes, I know, I know, I'm a sad person. <laughs> stop, so that is actually the first thing that Google tells you to do. Oh my, um, which is, <sighs> I'm going to, um, you know, it would also help if I, like, just just blocked my face from this thing. There we go. And I'm going to make this bigger so that we can actually see what I'm doing. Do -do -do. Do -do -do. And you can read the text. So... And make it wider. Okay. And the text gets embiggened a bunch. There we go. Okay, so... Don't, I should I should just get like a little privacy thingy for this, but just bear with me for a second. Okay, so sudo systemctl stop joy detection demo. Okay, I can do that. sudo system control stop joy. Tab completion is my friend. Oh, not quite. Oh boy, did I lose? No, here we go. Oh, I'm just getting a bit of a lag here unfortunately. There we go. And now the privacy green LED has turned off on here. The top LED is still going um, on its blue color, which is a little surprising to me, but at least it is no longer going to be doing its like constant obs assessment of my emotions and whether they are valid or not. <laughs> cool. So um, let's take a look at the first one of these demos. Again, I've got the, the link in the description of this video on Facebook. Uh, and if you want to follow along, it's aiyprojects.withgoogle.com slash vision. And I've scrolled down to the bit where you use uh, a monitor mouse and keyboard because that's essentially what I'm doing. Okay, so we've just stopped the joy detector. And now uh, what we're going to do is change the directory where the vision examples are all stored, and then we're gonna have a look at what is around there. So 
Mm -mm. CAD, AIY projects, Python, source examples, vision. Okay. What was it again? Oh, rookie mistake. Okay, let's have a look what's in here. Okay, so there's already a file in here called glow.jpg. It's a picture of my face. I took it earlier when I was trying these out before. Um, and there's a bunch of different ones that you can look at. I haven't actually looked at LED's example, but we'll get to that. Uh, I'm gonna run a few of these and then we're gonna see what the code inside looks like. Uh, in fact, let's first just take a look at... Oh, <laughs> crap. <laughs> uh, I have to go back there again now. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to open Nano, which is my text editor, and look at joydetectiondemo.py. All right, so here is the uh, internal Python code in that file. This is what we were just running. So you're importing a bunch of modules, um, a lot of modules. Uh, there's some stuff for playing the little tone that you heard that goes bada -bip, bada -bip, whether you're happy or sad or whatever. Uh, there's stuff about, um, there's two different ones for the LEDs. There's one that controls the LEDs, which is the colored RGB LED on the top in the button. And then there's also privacy LED, which is the green one. Uh, and as you'll notice in a couple of the other demos, they actually don't have the privacy LED enabled. Uh, so when you're writing your own code for this, please definitely be sure to include that. Uh, and I'll probably mod it into the other uh, examples on here just because I think that's important. Um, no one wants the whole um, Google Glass issue to happen again. So then you've got the button, you've got Pi Camera, which is a pretty standard Pi library for working with uh, the camera. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so then you have the definitions of the colors, for happy and sad, what the different um, tones are, as well as uh, I think the score peak and minimum are also about controlling the colors and determining how happy or sad you are, which is what triggers the tones to play. You've got stopwatches, you've got all these like custom functions in here. Uh, it tells, it talks about drawing a rectangle, which is interesting to me because uh, it doesn't actually show on screen what it's doing, like what the camera is seeing while it's running. So I'm not sure why it wants to, you know, draw a rectangle, but that's fine. There's a photographer that saves the photo photographs to a disc in a specific place with a specific like file name and stuff. Uh, and this is actually funny because I didn't realize it was taking still frames of my face the last time I was testing this. Uh, and it took a bunch of pictures of random stuff and saved them into my Pi. Uh, so let's have a look at where those went. Uh, they went into here and it's just like weird random stuff like mostly of the table I think uh, yeah <laughs> strange so if you suddenly find yourself running out of space maybe check your pictures folder um, stopwatch for taking the photo if faces are detected then you uh, save it a special way I guess controlling the RGB LEDs and stuff okay and um, so this is basically how you would dig around to look at what it's actually doing with your face. And I'm gonna cut this short because I don't wanna spend all our time on that. Okay. So what are the other ones? We've got, um, what does Google say we should check out next? I image classification in the live camera. So this one was fun. Um, got a bit of a, grungy keyboard here that doesn't super like to work. So it takes a second to fire up here. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing with different things on here. Uh, the the image window actually is gonna cover up the text. Oh, it's green. But we're gonna see in a second, uh, you know, once we close that window, we'll be able to see what it thought these things were. So I've got a bunch of Legos here, which I thought would work pretty well, but it doesn't, it seems to think it's like a paintbrush or a pencil sharpener or a lighter or a feather boa. For some reason, I'm not sure what the deal is with that. <laughs> uh, weird. 
Um, glasses. It seems to think other things are glasses, but I haven't tried mine yet, so I'm cute. Assault rifle? Harmonica? Stethoscope? <laughs> I love this. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty convinced it's a stethoscope. It looks like neck brace. Uh, I'm just looking at some of the little words that are scrolling by, uh, behind this. But it is really good at identifying keyboards! Computer keyboard, look at how much confidence we have there. Okay, so now I'm going to close this, uh, control C to stop it. And we're going to scroll up a little bit to see what it thought of these things. <laughs> Bow tie, <laughs> hairspray, it really likes those ones. Computer keyboard, uh, there's a lot of confidence there. 0.71, which is pretty good. 0.81, yeah. Uh, then we get into the previous things, which are like... Uh, oh, it got a bolo tie, which I think is my necklace that it's picking up here. Hair dryer, blow dryer, this is what it thought that my glasses were. <laughs> Not exactly. Not quite. Violin, rifle, yeah, assault rifle. Mm. And then here's where the Legos were, which is bow tie, stole, trench coat, uh, cellular telephone, harmonica. Feather boa is very popular. I think it sees the... Uh, oh yeah, and it thinks it's an ice lolly or a lollipop or a popsicle. Uh, it really thinks that brightly colored things, I think, are that. I could be wrong on what its, um, what its decision matrix is like, like what makes it think that something is a lollipop versus some Legos, but I'm not going to speculate on that. Uh, let's see, what else we got? Mm -mm -mm. Face detection in the live camera. So this is going to draw a, a little square around my face. And we can pull that one up. Again, it takes a second to, to fire up here. And here we go. There we are. Yeah. Hi, camera. What's up? <laughs> and then I tried out, like, I've actually built a thing that's supposedly going to help me uh, prevent face detection. It's like a veil with some 3D printed stuff on it. Uh, and so I'm really curious to see how that goes. Like, what level of obstruction and which parts of your face you need to obscure in order to keep it from telling that you're a human. So like, you know, things like this don't really do much. I think it, uh, I've heard that it mostly focuses on this area, but especially sort of the area above your eyes and this. Um, so we can test that out, you know. Eyes are definitely a big one. Like, I don't have a face anymore, oh no. <laughs> Maybe that's why those like old-timey uh, villains always used like little masks that obviously don't cover much of their face at all. Uh, so this just detects the number of faces in here. If we got more people in here, it wouldn't be able to tell, like, um, it would be able to count them, but you don't actually get any emotion data on here. You do, however, get that in one of the other demos. Let's see. We have a face camera trigger that takes a picture of your face when it sees it. It's pretty self-explanatory, but we'll go through it. Okay, <laughs> it's hard to tell like when it's actually going to take the picture. Uh, but we can do, uh, they give you instructions for viewing the image uh, over SSH uh, with like this display zero gpeg view faces.jpg thing. But um, if you're using it hooked up to a monitor, you can easily just go into the file system and have a look. Uh, and that's going to be stored not in your pictures folder, but in the, the way that the code is written, it's just going to be stored in the same folder where the file is that you just ran, the Python file. So that means that we go to the AIY project's Python file, or folder, source, examples, vision. And remember, that's exactly where the code is located that we were just running. So this is the picture that we just took just now. <laughs> I guess it just takes a minute to take it. All right. Uh, and with that, we can actually do uh, face detection on an image. 
So I'm going to say face detection dot pi uh, with the flag input, and then we can use either glow.jpg or faces.jpg, either one. Um, and that's basically just going to run this picture that we've just taken through the image detection thingy and tell us what its sort of emotion score is. I think last time this took a little longer than I expected. But, um, oh no, here we go. So face number zero, face score equals one. Cool, I have a face. <laughs> Joy score is 0 0.05 approximately, which like, you know, it really doesn't think I'm happy at all. <laughs> and then it has a bounding box for the rectangle that it wants to draw, which is like, you know, where your face is. Um, yep. So I think that the way that bounding box is written, I could be wrong, but uh, I think it just just drawing a square that's 838 pixels square because it tells me, no, I could, I'm not gonna guess on that. There's, you can check out the code if you want. Um, in fact, let's look at some of these other bits of code here. Um, oh yeah, there's a GPIO0 folder, which could be cool with maybe some uh, some stuff to control the GPIO general purpose input output pins, which is what you are going to hook up any uh, external devices to. So if you want to control a servo or whatever, um, you would be using the GPIO pins. And my assumption is that this is something that would help with that. Uh, so yeah, this is, um, there's a couple of other demos that you can do. There's a dish classifier demo. So if you ho hold up, uh, or take a picture of some food and you want to figure out what's in the food, you can do that. Um, pretty great. There's a couple others. Let's see. Uh, there's an image classification one, uh, and an object detection one. So you can tell if something is a dog or like a cat or a panda or your mom. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's like 5.30. I should have done this earlier in the day. But uh, yeah, anyway, so uh, this is basically the, the gamut of demos that they've given you. It's a super solid way to start out. I think that it really sets you up for the ability to modify it to do whatever you want to build. And if you scroll down past that, then you can um, start using their instructions on the TensorFlow model compiler to really sort of dig into building your own stuff. But uh, I think that a big part of the maker spirit is just kind of like taking what already exists and tweaking it to suit your own needs. Uh, and I definitely look forward to doing a bunch of that with this kit. Super exciting. So yeah, check out the link. Um, stay tuned. I'm going to do a little bit with the voice kit. This was the vision kit. Um, with this little like cute little camera and LED and stuff. Uh, and button, and this one is the voice kit. I'm gonna do some of those demos in the future uh, in a very similar fashion, hooked up to here. Uh, and so stay tuned. And if you wanna see how these were put together, then just uh, check back on our YouTube channels or our Facebook page, and we've got the live builds of those up. Thanks for watching and have an awesome rest of your Thursday.